is not Sam Wrestling. Introducing your host from New York, here is Sam Roberts. This is fun. We now welcome yes. back somebody who the last time they were here, I think, started a pandemic. Because the I'm last, the blame for it? I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> the last time you were in this studio, I mean, the next day, yes. everything shut down. It was like... My, my wife was like, that's the end of you having people in this studio. I don't know what you're doing anymore, but a pandemic is here. I'm like, yes. man, I hope Vince doesn't find out that I dragged our truth out in a oh pandemic. My gosh. Everybody's okay now, and our truth is yeah. back. Welcome back, man. Man, full circle. You know what I'm saying? Full, Two years later. Full circle. Yes. And oh we're just gosh. looking at life, but I mean, you... You, I was thinking about your full circle, like just today. I mean, talk about full circle. You're yeah. you're sitting there in the in the eighties, pursuing this hip hop career, right? Right. Instead right. of like right out of high school, meaning Tupac, meaning meaning Easy E, meaning all these people, right? And somehow, decades, decades later, you loop around and you're like, "Hey, I'm going around New York promoting my hip hop music." It's like things never you, change. You man. got here. Yes. That's so wild. I got here and I got here by the grace of God. And I got here by maturing, man. And, and with good energy, good um, good everything, goodness has me still here. I love to that because it is maturing, right? Like yes. it is it is maturing, but at the same time, it's like, well, what does a mature our truth look like? And then you turn on Monday Night Raw or you look at TikTok and you're pretending to be an action figure and you're like, see? Maturing, yes, that's, that's <laughs> grown people that pay bills. Mature, yeah. yes, yes, <laughs> that's that's it. It is, man, and you know what, man? I think everybody does it the way they do it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I feel like I'm very mature. I'm more mature than probably most 95, 97, 98, 99 percent of the people out here. Yeah. Um, when I say that, I mean like, um, ain't no such thing as age or that's just a number to me, man. It's um, at heart, dog, um. At heart, bro, I feel like I'm like 20 years old. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, and, but but I think the mature part is that you actually have your stuff together now. Oh, bro, you better. It's called adapting and, and evolving with time and evolving with yourself as a human being, as a person, as a law-abiding, bill-paying citizen. Right. You know what I'm saying, man? Like, you <laughs> have to adapt, man, and mature. Uh, if not, you'd be left in the past, stuck in the past, still doing old things. Yeah, yeah. The other reason that I like that... Uh that you've come so full circle is not just because it's like, oh man, you're maturing and everything. It's like, because I think there are a lot of people who might get into your position that are like, oh, I got a little bit of fame. I got some money. I have an audience. Let me see what I can spawn off to. Maybe I'll do an album. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do that. But like your story is different. The fact that like you can trace this back and go like, no, 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 no. Like doing music and doing an album in this, this is not because, oh, I'm, I, I got myself an audience. I can make an album. It's, this is this is what Ronnie Killings, the kid, wanted to do from the very, very beginning. From the beginning, Dan. This is this is it. Yeah. That's that's the best way to sum it up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, it's an amazing thing, and it's so cool too that there's direct evidence of it, right? Right. That like this, you can go it's see. been documented. You can go see it. Yeah. You can Google it now. You can. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, what was the? Uh, you know, we're talking about the pandemic. What was the? How was the pandemic for you? I feel like everything, you ended up making the most of it. Uh, yes, I made the most of it, man. I adapted. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Involved with it, man. It's, um, a lot of things happened. The whole world was affected by the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know? And by the grace of God, man, wrestling, entertainment didn't stop mm -mm. because uh, everybody needed something to focus off of and onto or vice versa because of it was just that, that much of a... F up to where like we didn't know what to do. And life doesn't come with a handbook. So nobody really had the right answers, the right cure, the right anything. And I just continued to entertain. I continued to be myself. And uh, WWE allowed us to continue to work, which was a blessing within itself. And a lot of people ask me, oh, well, how was it, man? Um, you guys had to wrestle with no audience and, and nobody there, isn't that? Like, well, 
that's almost a part of adapting and evolving. In life, I got to be my own cheerleaders a lot of time. You got to be your own cheerleaders. Sure. You're not going to have nobody root for you. And then with the wrestling part of it, that's how a lot of us got our jobs, auditioning with no audience, nobody around, just that one guy that's going to say, yes, you're good, you can get a contract, or no, just no audience. So, right. So we adapted back to what we know. Right, right. Yeah, the idea of performing for an audience of one is not this similar to you, and to an extent, too. I mean, you did start. It's not like you just jumped into WWE. It's not like you started in arenas. Like, you started in front of tiny crowds. So it's yes. like you've been there. It's been a long time, but you've been there before. Yes, correct, man. So it was just going back and retracing my tracks, man, and coming back uh, bigger, better, stronger. Yeah, yeah. And is that so do you kind of, when it starts to happen, were you worried that like oh there's i don't think we're gonna be able to pull this off maybe the first week you know doing a show in the pc like that can be fun it's different but like or did you know look this is what wwe does they just find ways to pull it off and they'll point me yeah. in the direction and i'm gonna make the most out of it Boink. that's B. it b b yeah. <laughs> the latter <laughs> yes man it's uh and again wwe man we 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 learn we, we learn and, and we adapt to having to come up, create, and, and execute, and, and deliver on the fly. Mm -hmm. So when life throws you those things like that, we just evolve and adapt to it, man. And, and WWE give it to us. We look at it, we read it, whatever. Oh, nobody's there. This, oh, this is how you want it done? And we continue to do it, man. And that product is just such in, is, is so instilled in everybody's memory and head that they they adapt. Yeah, yeah, and it is it is one of those things. It's like, it's Monday. It's Monday, and you know the what it is. The show's got to be on. You know what it is. Yeah. Yes, and you tune in. Right, of course, no matter what, because yeah. that's what you do <laughs> on Monday. It doesn't matter. That's what you do, and it's yes. like, okay, they're going to be there for us. And I think uh, people kind of take that for granted a little bit, too. Like, it's great. No other organization was like, yeah, we're still going to, like, without taking a week off. Everything stopped. Everything, except for one thing. WWE. That was it. We continued, bro. It, it's like, I, I, I'm not saying like that, but it's kind of funny when you put it like, like we were like the roaches of <laughs> yes. the, the pandemic, dog. Like, yes. when everything goes away, roaches still here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. we were the only thing that took your mind up and, and kept hope alive. Yeah. That kept hearts and spirits up. And, and like, we can do it. We, we graved the way for other professional athletes and sports to continue to follow us doing that. I think In the so. pandemic, right? Yeah. Absolutely. We were the first one to do it. Like, and then the NBA did it. Then uh, NFL did it. Like, we we continued to, like, run it. Yeah. I mean, even UFC was like, well, maybe we can start running shows out of our performance facility. Like, our, our training like facility. Like they Yeah. 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 <laughs> 100%. And it, it, was, it was all amazing to see, man. So, do you try to... Because some people, like... They kind of figure stuff like that out, right? And they try to impart that knowledge onto other people. And then there are others that are like, I figured it out, but you know what? I'm going to give them their space and let them figure it out. Do you kind of go around when you see somebody that might not see things that way and sees the negative? Do you go, no, man, you're looking at it all wrong. Here's what's going on. Or do you go, well, whatever. If that's their perspective, that's their perspective. They're going to have to figure that out on their own. Um, I think that's that's, that's like a open window. Um. I am that guy that likes to go and assist, mm -hmm. almost like look at it as in giving back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because somebody did it for me, but at the same time, I don't want to be overbearing on nobody or, or like I'm preaching to them or I'm like that, you know, it's going to be, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> that can get, you know, so that's a lot of static there, you know what I'm saying? And it can get lost in translation. It can get lost in the way it come off of somebody. A lot of the younger guys, man, a lot of guys that, that feel that way, they'll come to me or, or they'll mention it or they'll say it in hopes of me responding to it or saying something, then I'll throw that words of encouragement, that feel of support or, or triumph. You can do it. We can do it. I done done it. If I did it, you can do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because there is, like, everybody wants to think that, like, their positive attitude is going to be contagious, but at the same time, like, sometimes there's nothing worse than when you're having a shitty day and somebody comes up to you and goes, like, you really shouldn't feel that way. You're like, yeah, I don't need to hear that right now. Right. Oh, like, you need to give me a little bit of space. Right. And let me feel this way for a second. I'll figure it out. That could always be worse. It could be worse. <laughs> it, it could be, be worse. You know, yes. you should be happy. I'm not going to be happy right now. Right. I'm not happy right now at all. Right okay? now. And you just pissed me off even more saying that. <laughs> yeah. Like a roach. Again, like a roach. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Try not to be roaches, man, in life. You know what I'm saying? No. But. But they have those survival like instincts. Yeah. 
<laughs> survive like a roach. Don't be a roach, but survive like yeah, one. Yeah, you'd be a roach, not a pest. <laughs> right? We figured it out. These yes. are already great life philosophies. Life hacks, dog. Nobody life knows. Hacks. Life hacks. Nobody gets that. Life doesn't come with a handbook, man. And we're giving them the handbook on how to be that roach. I mean, I feel like at this point, if anybody could write a life handbook, you've seen a lot of life. I have. I feel like you could probably, you've navigated more than most people would ever have to. And you have a way with words as well. Have you ever thought about like, you could probably write a fairly helpful life hack handbook, don't you think? I never thought of that. I could. Damn, you're right. I could. Yeah. It would be very funny, though, because there's some time I'm going to stop and say something funny. But yeah, I could Like, there would have to be Google. some our truth isms in there, of course. Have to be. Like, I mean, don't be a roach, not a pest. That's a whole chapter. Oh, one, two, and three. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, everything about that. Um, oh, my gosh, man. I never thought about that. But, and more people need to be enlightened to life hacks like that for mental emotional stress everything like right yeah absolutely but i also think that like it become it's a little difficult for people who haven't experienced certain things like things can seem very very stressful mm. when you haven't experienced, experienced something it. that's very very stressful right right like so at what point do you feel like you kind of eased up on the stress or kind of came to that realization that you know what you have to kind of let life happen and then make the best of it. Were you? Is this more of a, a recent phenomenon, or is this something that you figured out pretty early on? Um, a little of both. Uh, I think I figured out a long, long time ago. You can't, you can't force nothing. Anything you force always mess up. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Or it never comes out right. Um, the words "let it be what it's going to be." Mm -hmm. um, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, acceptance. Um, allowing time for failure because where failure comes growth come a lot of time for mishaps a lot of times for all the bad if you expect all the good mm -hmm. and just having that mustard seed of faith it outweighs everything to me it makes it easier for me all the bad with all the good is a really interesting one i feel that way like it's weird like with with, with social media and stuff like that there are people who want to completely avoid negative feedback they don't like it they're like get out of here. like you shouldn't be able to do that right but the positive feedback is cool i take, all, I mean? take it all yeah give me all the positive. oh that's good oh no my breath is bad oh you <laughs> get him out of here no yeah. oh i got big ears now too right okay i don't want to hear what he's saying either get him out of here no give it all to me yeah you have to take it all just pay, get as long as people are talking right as long as they're talking you know yeah. what i'm saying because a lot of bad stuff good things come out of it a lot of good things come out of bad stuff yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? There it is. Life has a way of doing that. It doesn't come with a handbook. It's to right. each its own. Right, right. And just figuring it out as you go, right? As you go, man. And adapting. Yeah. Evolving. Uh, a little give, a little take, a little acceptance, a little rationalizing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's hard, but it's easy. Mm -hmm. You feel me on that? Mm -hmm. um, and nobody has the right answers to it. So mm -hmm. you can go to him, her, they, them. Everybody, I think each individual has to evolve, adapt, and, you know what I'm saying, look at their own situation, their life, um, and execute. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, well, here's what worked for me, but it worked for me. For me. Right, because my brain's wired a certain way, because I come from a certain set of experiences, because this is what my goals are, this is what's on my plate. Like, you copy this plan, and you, you're not, I mean, you you might or might not, it may work for you, but maybe. it may not. Yeah. Right. Or maybe you, you can kind of did did you do you feel like you kind of uh uh take from a lot of different people like, oh, that's a good thing that they do, that's a good thing that they do. Yes. You know, like I'm sure we brought up Vince a minute ago. I'm sure there's so much to learn from a Vince McMahon from any conversation with Ooh, a guy like that. Man. Right? Yes, yes. But at the same time, you can't live that guy's life. No. You can't, re you can't just do what he does. It ain't gonna work for me. That way. <laughs> no. The outcome will be totally different. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's figuring out like what to cherry pick, right? Life is all about cherry picking. That's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. And I think if a lot more people did a lot more cherry picking, they can make their own apple pie or pecan pie. Yeah, I mean, I don't know or... exactly how you're gonna make apple pie out of cherries, but you can make a cherry pie. It, it, it's possible though. You know what? That's, you can make an apple cherry pie. 
Look. Well, pecan apple pie. <laughs> and if you say it's possible, who am I to say <laughs> that it's not possible, Truth? I mean, if anybody is going to say something's possible. Possible. It's, it's, the word says possible, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. The word impossible, it says possible in there. It's in there. So there's no such thing, ain't it? Right. You know like, there's no I in team, but there is a possible and impossible. Boom. That's it, dog. See, I mean, we could write a book. I think so. We've already done it. <laughs> I feel like we've been on for like ten minutes, and we figured out we figured out life. The we didn't impossible even... roach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Be a possible roach, not an impossible pest. Oh yes. Is that good? Yes. Okay. Oh, that works. You, you see what I'm saying? You got it. <laughs> Be a possible <laughs> roach, not an impossible pest. <laughs> So how I mean I don't even how is life right now how is every how is between wrestling music family oh, I'm enjoying life um, I'm enjoying uh, everything that is bringing me right now especially with this music man it's um it's given me so much with everything I've done and accomplished mm -hmm. this music just sets me in a whole different it gives me my own I have my own lane for one thing you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying I am that guy in wrestling when you think of Rapping, you think of wrestling or music, whatever. Our truth, Ron Kim, I'm the one that comes up with that. Sure. So it's like now being able to like give my fans, my following, my cult followings, the legacy of what you know about, you know me as what have I, what I've done, and where I've matured at. I'm going to give you all that to where you can hear it, feel it, and see it. And my music is is what started my whole whole path of this whole life thing of me wanting to be the biggest rap star. To, now I have that audience. Yeah. I have that audience. I created that audience. That audience grew with me. I, I, I practically raised that audience. Yeah. So now they get a chance to like sit down, witness, listen, and feel my legacy. Yeah. Do you, when you're like writing music, is it difficult to, because I feel like, right, like I feel like if, if I had been on this journey, it would be tough for me to break out of writing music that I wanted to write even like 20 years ago. And music's changed so much, right? Like you have to stay up with what's contemporary and what's going on. Like, how do you find, because your music is contemporary. Right. Like your music doesn't, it's not a throwback. No, it, it's it, not. It, and it, and it, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to write about 20 years ago. Right. I want to write about now. What 20 years ago led me to where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you have to make a full circle to let people know who you are, where you came from, to to to, to now who you who you is. You know right. what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like um giving them the recipe from it started with just a um a Tupperware bowl. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then we added the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Then we added the spices. Then we added the sugar, the sweets, the salts, the stuff you don't like, the the oregano, all that stuff. And then you bake it. You make it. You either you bake it or you fry it or whatever. But you get the whole recipe, whether it started from the Ruta or it goes all the way to the Tudor. You get it all. <laughs> I wouldn't do a, the rap I would do years ago when I first started wouldn't be a rap that I would do right now. Right. Because it's it's a whole different time. It's a whole different generation now. Yeah. It's a whole different, all the tunes is in now. It's a whole different, but at the same time, I want to remain original. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a lot of adapting and almost targeting your audience. Mm -hmm. That Ron Killings or Truth audience, they kind of like if I did a song about roaches, they'll like it. Mm -hmm. If I did a song about anything, so now it's me servicing them with whatever it is that I'm finna bring them that's considered my legacy. Mm -hmm. And I think it doesn't matter if I'm talking about the Kangos I used to wear back in the day with the cross colors, or to right now wearing some Yeezys, or, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, I think it's the meat in between that they wanna they wanna eat. Yeah. Yeah, and also, I mean, it's this opportunity for you to take full control creatively, Yes, right? It's not like, you know, a collaborative process is a great process, but at some point, as an artist, you want to be able to just hold on to everything, right? And, everything. And, and tell that story that's now just your story outside of everything. There's an audience that's waiting to listen to. There's an audience that's sitting there eating popcorn that's waiting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... Either be the maestro or, or be gone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So did you did you always have this in the back of your mind that this is where you're going to be going, or because like you brought music was always a part of your character in wrestling, right? right. Like you go, K Crush, K Quick, like it's always been there. 
was there a period of time where you were like, okay, then that's what I'll do. That's that, that satiates both appetites and I'll be the wrestler who raps coming to the ring and, and performs and everything. Or did you always <laughs> have this thing knowing, no, at some point I'm also going to make music yes. outside of this. Always, always, knew always. always knew it, man. And it was just timing. Mm -hmm. That's another key factor to life. Uh, timing. I've always known this since Jack Crockett talked me into it and, and told me how I should do it and laid down the, the path for me. I always knew, okay, one day they're going to get the just of this. Mm -hmm. One day, one day, and that day has come. How do you know when that day has come? How do you know that, like, is, it, is there just a, a feeling? Was there something that happened? Boom. That was a... Period. With a T. Yeah. Period. Period. Yes. The feeling. Yeah. My music is all about feel. Right. You, when you see me, on, when you, whether it's on TV or you hear me, I make you feel something. Mm -hmm. you, you feel good. You feel energized. You feel it's, it's the energy that I bring. And I know it's the right time because I feel it. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I'm getting so many views on a title, the 24-7 title, man, you know, just to like bring around things. I've got more views on that throughout my than my whole career of wrestling. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's the feel. Mm -hmm. it, it's the feel like there's no right of time then now. How do you, okay, so this is, this is, this is what's so great. Like the 24-7 the title. I feel like when you talk about legacy, mm -hmm. that's such a great legacy for this part of your career. Because that's a title that a lot of people looked at is stupid. This oh, is yeah. dumb. This is not yeah. real wrestling. The yes. belt's ugly. Whatever they said, right? Ugly. And instead of like, instead of hearing all that and going like, yeah, I don't know why they're making me. I could be the world champion. I could be. You were like, okay, this is what, this is what the job is. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the job done. And you, you know, just start taking this ridiculous thing, and making these ridiculous segments that are like. Highlights, hilarious, entertainment, and this whole other side of you comes out, and it's all based around this thing that, like, yeah, maybe on paper this shouldn't work, but that doesn't mean it's not going to work. Oh. You know, no. I, I, I feel like that that's a big part of, of kind of the last, what, at least 10 years of your career, maybe your whole, whole career. Yes. Just making stuff work, whether it should work or not. Doing whatever you have to do. Adapting. Yeah, adapting. That's right. Adapting, evolving. If you can't do that, then you're in the wrong place. Have you done anything where you go out and you're like, especially when it comes to the entertainment stuff, because like comedians will bomb. Every comedian bombs on stage at some point, and they got they go, okay, you know, take your licks and go out right. to the next show and do better next time. Have you done anything where like backstage or when you're thinking about it, you're like, oh yeah, this will hit. This is the thing. And then you get out there and do something and the crowd's like, this is, this is not it, truth. Well, this is dumb. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll give you a little, uh, this is probably going to book or something I'll do later on. Mm -hmm. um, overseas, you'll love this. Overseas, we, uh, you know, we do that two-week tour. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So all the guys are already giving me knack about it. It's Daniel Bryan and Cesaro. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think Kofi and, and New Day a little bit too because we were working uh, against New Day. And I would go out there and do my thing. Once I do my rap to the ring, regardless of where, where we're at, man, being Germany or whatever, all I had to do was say, um, Germany, make some noise. Ah, what's up? They do what's up? And I'm like, ah, and that's all right. I go to each side, ask them what's up, blah, blah, blah. And then the loudest one is everybody at the end, and I will go, whoop. There it is. And they will go, woo, there it is. And it would just keep going, woo, there it is. So uh, Cena was the first one that was like, oh, Truth, I think you should do some some different stuff. Like, I bet you this crowd, you should do, um, are you down with OPP? <laughs> and I said, bro, ain't nobody in Ireland. Don't nobody in Ireland know nothing about OPP. He said, bro, you should do it. And they got in my head so bad, Sam. Cena, Cesaro, and Daniel Bryan to where Cena was like, all right, if you don't do it, I'll do it. I'm like, no, bro. I'm the rapper. I do it. He said, well, if you're not going to do it, you're down with OPP, I'm going to do it. And my match is after you. I'm going to do it. And bro, I'm like walking around. I'm like, okay, he's trying to take my rap stuff. He's trying to rap stuff. I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So sell out at the monitor. All the boys wait for me to do this. <laughs> Sam, that's about what, like fifteen thousand people. Small arena, man, right? And this is this is Ireland, Ireland, man. Okay. And um, I get in the ring to my rap. There, what's, what's up? What's up? What's up? Ireland, make some noise. Ah, what's up? What's up? And I'm like, whoop, there it is. Like, whoop, there it is. I said, you down with OPP? <laughs> 
Sam, I could hear paper rustling, dog. <laughs> and it's like, what did he say? <laughs> what did, he, did he say OPP? And New Day, Xavier had tears coming out of his eyes, man. And uh, when I got to the back, man, like seeing them was on their backs laughing, bro. It was like first time they ever seen me just like, they had no idea what the hell I was talking about. Did he say OPP? <laughs> yes, that was straight bomb. <laughs> yes. Not even Hatcher, Trench, anybody, anybody? Nobody. How do you know whoop there? You don't whoop there, but you don't know OPP? Oh, you down with OPP. And I said it with, our truth assurance. And the, uh. You done with OPP? <laughs> and I, real quick, real quick, Sam, I said, all right, we're going to go ahead and get started, y'all. And Xavier and them, they got out of the ring because they couldn't, they couldn't do nothing. They were still laughing. <laughs> Did you say that? We're going to go ahead and get started? Yes. I had to. Yeah. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> just to break, just to, to ease break the tension. I guess. <laughs> oh, it's all truth. He's okay. He's okay, man. He's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we can go yes, ahead and get this man. started. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. <laughs> and then when you come back, are you like used? To, like, are you, are you... I come back and they're, oh, my God. <laughs> Cena's on the ground laughing. He said, I can't believe we got you. You did it. You did it. He said, well, I heard somebody say, I said, you didn't hear nobody say, you down. We down with OPP. You know me. Nobody <laughs> no, said it. Nobody. Said nobody. <laughs> nobody said it, Sam. <laughs> Quiet, oh. dog. Oh. That's the, that's the, oh, silence is not good. No, 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 that's what we were saying. As long as they're talking, they're doing it's okay. something, man. But you know what it sounds like when they're not talking. They don't have a clue who or what OPP o -P was. OP or P. They no, don't know anything of them. about it. Did he just say alphabets? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> we're trying to do it. Are you down with OPP? Yeah. I can't confirm or deny. I don't know what you're saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. So that, was, that was my worst bomb moment, man. And, uh, uh, now, okay, fun. when that happens, like, are you okay with it? Do you like it, or do you hate the uncomfortableness? Uh, you can't make me uncomfortable. Okay, that's yeah, what I, I, won't, I refuse to be uncomfortable. Right? right. Yeah, I'll, you just live in it. I'm gonna live in this silence. Yeah, I'll ride uncomfortable sour. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> then, uh, or they would do guys uh, stuff like um, I think Fit Finley was good for this man. They knew how serious I was about rapping to the ring and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They would have, it's funny now that I'm talking about it. Fit would have the guy, like, at least one night he would have the guy make my music go in and out. Like, well, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> People don't know. And that's a difficult. Were, oh, my gosh. I'm already getting blown up because I'm rapping, all exertion, and, like, I got these in ears, and he would have the guy do something where static is in there, and I'm, like, hitting my ears. <laughs> And they're at the monitor laughing their ass off. So they're like laughing. I'm hitting hit my ears. I'm still rapping. And I'm turning around. And I'm looking. Because the guy, the music guy is over here. I'm looking around and pointing at my ears. Fitz having himself a ball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All the boys that's in on having a ball. And when I get in the ring, there's a chance I might cut a promo on the, uh, now the sound guy. <laughs> there's times I was like, sorry, y'all. The guy can't get my sound right. <laughs> and the guy doing the sound is like, oh, no. I'm very good at following instructions. I'm doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I am very good. But the funny thing about it is the fans were still cheering. They didn't care. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was, it just added to my, oh, I can do anything? And just yeah. like, yeah. Y'all like it? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I man. Need, I need to stop worrying. I just so stop much. worrying about everything and just do it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yes, man. That's well, it. that's right. That's the that's the lesson from the failure, right? That's, that's the it. growth from the failure. Growth adaption. How, right? Yeah. The other the other growth from the failure is you learning as a human being. How do you not physically assault people when they try to humiliate you in oh front of a gosh. live audience? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's so so. Some of us in this world. Uh, try to develop some sort of personality or sense of humor because our physical defense mechanism is weak. Right. You know, I mean, I'm not going to say me personally, but like, you know, sometimes... You develop a character? You no, know, no, no. A personality? So, yeah, sometimes you got to be able to tell a joke because if a fight breaks out, you're hopeless. I'm saying that that, you know... Like me, myself, and Irene type, or no? <laughs> <laughs> but, but for you, like, I feel like if I... We're in your position. Mm -hmm. I would never need need to develop a sense of humor or personality, because like I can handle myself physically. So what else right. do you need? When did you 
Like, were you always just a funny guy, like, growing up? Yeah, always. 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 Man, I remember, I actually, I think I laughed, I laughed with my mom about this when I went over to the house on Thanksgiving. And I'm, like, I'm attracted to knowledge now. And, mm-hmm. and like, um, people that smart, like, Daniel Brown's real smart, like, brainiacs. I'm, I'm, I'm attracted to knowledge. Mm-hmm. Because my teachers would tell me, like, you're so funny. You Like, you, you have the whole class, like, you can... You can take the whole audience about my class and just and they'll do what you tell them to do. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pass you. So a lot of my teachers, a lot of my teachers. That, that, by the way, that goes right back. So you're saying I can do anything? Like as long as I'm entertained, I could just do anything to you? I would bring my teachers. Some of them I would bring an apple to school. Wouldn't let you ever bring a teacher an apple. No, that's like the stereotype, and nobody actually does it. I brought apples, and then right at lunchtime, I'll probably go. Nose dive across the schoolyard while it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So it was like a lot of my teachers passed me because I made them laugh. Right. Because I entertained the class because I I just had that at a young age, man. It was I didn't have to build a character or And that's but that's I mean, I've heard of the class clown, but like being so entertaining that the teacher's like, Yeah, you're good. Don't worry about it. Oh, I was a school clown. I was like <laughs> I remember Mr. Bell, I was a principal. He would give us he would give me the school auditorium during lunch breaks to where I could go in there and just like tell jokes. I would just like, or talk about somebody, I would just make jokes. Like I would just, people would like be hiding and stuff because they didn't want me to pick them out because I'm like, I'm going to say something about you. You know what I'm saying? So, and this was like, the principal was like, yeah, you got this. You do it. Yeah. Pick at him. Pick at him. Get him. So, but it would all be good humor, nothing to hurt anybody's feelings. Right. It was just all good fun. And I was doing, I started doing that in high school. That's so great. Did you ever pursue stand up or anything like that? Oh no, 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 no. Did you never wanted to? I never thought about it. I just, I know funny. I know how to make people laugh, make right. people feel good. I just, I never thought about. I mean, stand up comedy is, is hard. Stand up comedy is hard. That is hard, and that's like that real risk of like that's I can get real... hit by that silence and or a tomato. <laughs> yeah, or a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. I give. Uh, Comics, man, all the credit in the world, man. That that would be extra hard to do. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's why. So 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 this is just your whole life. Like you know, you you you're in school. The principal gets such a kick out of you. He's yes. like, yeah, no, I like that kid. You, I mean, you you've told stories before about when you were when you were locked up. The guards thought you were the man. Yeah, that, bro. That's all they with you. Tupac and Easy and all these rappers and celebrities and like I'm telling jokes to the inmates and inmates are like sitting there like watching TV watching me just do stupid stuff yeah <laughs> like they're yeah. watching they're entertained by it man to where it was like alright we're gonna help this guy out yeah and then you go to WWE and the bosses the big big bosses are like this Brand guy's hilarious the I, yeah <laughs> just take me on a trip cause I make I'm, I'm good for morale <laughs> yeah <It's> like, yes. <laughs> that is that is by the way like that's exactly how I'd run a company like well, he's good for morale. Is that just code for you think he's funny? <laughs> <laughs> like, you just want him around to make you laugh? No. Good for morale. That's, that's a 100%. Yes. Yeah. 100%. But who don't like to laugh? Who don't, I mean, you know? It's the best. It's the Bro, best. Bro, man, it makes you feel good. Yeah. And release all that. Sometimes the monotony needs to get broken up. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? 100%. 100%. So you, so you develop, but based on that, you said you developed like a, a thirst for knowledge like now you like no i like i like smarts i like smart people now yeah yeah and you just i don't like being around dummies man you know what i'm saying <laughs> I don't, I don't, man. yeah you start to feel like i am i, I think I, I think you're making me dumber i got yeah i, I can't am have I dumbing this energy. down here or my yeah you know what i'm saying am i going backwards or yeah like you don't want to i i never want to be around somebody that's like man sam you're smart i'm like uh i'm hanging out with the wrong i'm people. not hanging around him ever again yes <laughs> no man and, and i think smart people somewhat got a good idea of who they are. Yeah, there's a confidence that comes with that, right? Confidence. And, and they there. figure out the world a little bit. So do you do you end up asking them questions and stuff like that? Or are you just like watching how their brains work? Both. Yeah. Watching them, uh asking questions, um getting enlightened. Mm-hmm. Uh the same way people like to be enlightened or inspired by me. I'm inspired by smart people that know things or like the square root of X equals Y Z and Pamela level down to the Alcatraz of like, like I don't know that. <laughs> no, really? You sound like a professional. You sound like a mathematician. I can't believe you don't know that stuff. <laughs> I stopped after adding the subtraction. <laughs> yeah, that's when you started making jokes, right? <laughs> 
Well, what you do is cross multiply. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, uh, actually, okay. I had a comedic observation. Yeah, about this. they always told me to carry the one. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> um, so, a question that I have for you that I was thinking about about the 24 7 championship, right? Mm-hmm. Like, on one end, I'm sure that it's a relief physically on your body to be involved in segments that are, are more comedic, more entertaining, less like you're not sitting out there and doing, you know, 25 minute right. matches and everything. But then I was thinking, even if it's just one shot, when you guys are the 24 seven champion, you have to bump on everything. You have to do at least one bump because there's so many pinfalls, right? At least. So you got to figure out how to bump on concrete, how to bump on a playground, how to bump everywhere. I can bump on the floor, don't bother me. Yeah, yeah. You can. I'm a bump, bumping, bumper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've been bumped to the highs of bump stiffity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, because I feel like there are, I'm, I would never say who, but there are certain people that they get to a place in their career where they're like, honestly, I'm just trying to figure out how to work a match with zero bumps in it. Yes. Right. That's yes. the real thing. Because right. your body, right. there's a limited amount of bumps that anybody can take. Anybody's body has a limited amount. Everybody's right. body does. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. Um, you're not going to go through the sport without feeling that. Sure. You know what I'm saying? And when it comes that time when you do have to feel it, you have to pick the times. You have to uh, be smart about it. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of careers have been ended by bumps. Yeah. That's, you know what I'm saying, put that out there now. So is there any 24-7 bump that, like, we would look at as fans and go, like, oh, yeah, that was just a goofy segment that you were like, no, that hurts like a son of a bitch. Like, that was terrible. Oh, which one would that be? Um... I will say when Carmelo drugged me on that um, golf cart because that, that, <laughs> it was souped up and they didn't tell us that it was a, one of the brand new 250 motor engines that has a super cross, you know what I'm saying, turbo twin pipes to it. Yeah. And I'm telling Carmelo, like, um, when you hit the gas, hit the gas. I said, like, I'm going to run past you and I'm going to stop, look at you, and I'm going to let you pass, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to catch you. She said, really? I said, yeah, just take off. <laughs> Bro, she drugged me on that, uh, that damn golf cart and everybody that was that owned the golf cart uh, course was over there laughing. like, And she drugged me, man, to where they went off camera. By the time she turned the corner, it slammed me into a fence. Like, it was oh my a God. real, it was a good drag. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, the trash can. I did a scene with Tazawa in the trash can. Uh-huh. If you've never been inside a metal trash can before. I never have. You haven't been inside a metal never trash can? Never in my life. No, never. <laughs> you got to get out more, Sam. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've lived a very sheltered existence. And no, I've never been in a... You got to get out more. Yeah. Um, inside a metal trash can, Hurts. It does. I'm talking about hurting, and we had I had to fall back in there. So it's like um, that was one of, like because I'm talking about bones, everything. Yeah. It's, you you around nothing but metal, uh. and you're falling in there. And y'all y'all see some trashes and that, but it's metal down there. Yeah. I'm hitting, and it was just one of them things that fans wouldn't know. And are you like, do you know as you're going down like this is just gonna suck? It is what it is. It is what it is. It is I'm, what I'm it used is. to. It. I yeah. adapt. Yeah. The um, the old spice. Hmm. When I came through the wall, those little boys whipped my ass. <laughs> Bro, I was bleeding. Really? So, yes. You're like, good news. This, is, like, this oh, is a promotional just, spot. I was you're bleeding. You're going to make a check, but... I was bleeding. You're going to have to bleed for it. Oh, my gosh. And uh, they were supposed to have, like, almost plastic type stuff. It was real wood. And the wood was, like, cut you wood. Yeah. And the first bump we took, <laughs> we all got up and was like, Oh, we thought this was supposed to be. <laughs> oh, no, we couldn't get any of that. Yeah. This is what we got right now. This is now. supposed to be a day off, and it's like. Uh, we got three more tries. We got three more takes. <laughs> yes. So enjoy. Yeah, that's what, like, it's one thing to take a, like, horrendous, severe bump that you can look at, and everybody, the audience goes like, ooh. It's another thing to take one and have the audience go like, What's the big deal? What's the big deal? Whatever. And you're like, no, it's a big deal. Nah, you don't know what that <laughs> consisted of. Yeah. Yes. So uh, on a scale of one to 10, can you rate uh, Peter Rosenberg's roll up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Oh, that was a good one, man. <laughs> Peter and I talked about that. Good, man. You know good. What I'm saying? We talked yeah. about it. Um Oh, uh, Peter did good. Peter did good. Uh, he did real good. Mm-hmm. He um, he did gooder than anybody else in his position would have done. 
You know what I'm okay, okay, because there's been a lot of non. A lot of people wrestlers, say that. The, yeah, but I no, I did. I know that he was not. I mean, there were people that were critical. Very critical, and he and that's he, he said that he didn't take it well. I mean, he, Peter's a sensitive guy, and he should be sensitive. Did it bother him? It did bother him, but it would bother me too. This is I would mean, it bother you? No, man, they I'd be twenty four seven champion. It wouldn't bother me. But they I don't know care you're about not that guy. They know you're not a wrestler. You're not. So it was like it should have been more of a best him say something than nothing at all. That's right. That's the moment for it. Boom. But you, uh, only, only thing is, you didn't give me a number. <laughs> I tried to go past that. <laughs> Let me say, you're good, Sam. Um, I got to give Peter a scale of one to ten. One to ten. Ten is the best. <laughs> we'll go. We'll go. We'll go. Ten is the best. I give him. Would I get heat for this? Nah. I give him a five. That's high. Five. Mm. Okay, okay, four. <laughs> that I'm easy. not gonna that was five. Easy. Okay, yeah. I give him five and carry the one yeah. for the attempt. Right. The physicality. He was open to get down to the physical. He was, he was open to it. Right. So I, I got to get him that. I'm carrying the one. So I mean. Carry the one. It was a four, but carry the <laughs> one. It makes it a five. <laughs> <laughs> no. And trust, no. trust me. If I had done it, it would have been a two. <laughs> negative one. But I wouldn't have cared. because. So Peter did care. Uh, well, he mentioned it, man. He said, "Oh, everybody was." <laughs> See, was yeah, he mentioned. I mean, the, yeah, I mean, we all have our sensitivities, right? We but do. at the end of the day, he was Peter Rosenberg, twenty four seven champion. Like it or not, he's a WWE title holder. And like you know it what? or not, I think there's a lot of people on the internet that they see a Sam Roberts, they see a Peter Rosenberg, they start to turn green with envy. Envy, you know. Then that creates and grows hate. And that's where it comes from. And they had little kids called jealousies. That's right. <laughs> you know little saying? babies. Yeah. That's, that's exactly to me. That's where it comes from. Yes, man. I think Peter did a damn good job, man. And that's my dog. You yeah. Know what I'm yeah. Yeah. One of my one of my favorite I mean, literally. I mean, and I think I thanked you for this at some point, but I don't know if I ever did it in person. One of my favorite things Peter Rosenberg reminded me that you ever did. Was I think it was either a year or maybe it was two years ago on the draft. You got confused and you made your own draft board, <laughs> and you drafted me to SmackDown and Peter Rosenberg to Raw. But I started reading my tweets because I was like watching Raw on a delay, so I could fast forward the commercials. And people are just tweeting me about being on Raw, and I'm like, being on Raw? What's going on? And I see this screenshot, and it's just the R Truth draft, and there's Sam Roberts right there, and I'm like. I made it. <laughs> you made the draft. Yes. Yes. Oh, that was funny, man. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Though. Oh, I always, man. Yeah, it. I got Thank you too, you. but you my dog too, though. I you know. know what I'm I know. Oh, I know. I know. Absolutely. So let's talk about the music. Right. Are you are you putting out a full album? Are we just gonna start are we gonna put out singles? Is there a place where people can hear it all? The EP. The EP. Legacy, the EP, eight songs on there. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Out the Window, it's the second single that's off the EP. That will come out December 3rd, which is this Friday. Nice. Yeah, so pre-save, 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 go and get it. And following the next week, December 10th, we will drop the Legacy EP. Ah, uh, so December 10th yes. is the Legacy EP. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you filmed a music video in a castle, correct? Castle. And in a western town. And in a western town, too? Yes, I was a cowboy. I was a new sheriff in town. <laughs> of course you were. Yes. That's amazing. How do you find these locations? Uh, my videographer did, man. Uh, shot by Reginald. Shout out. He uh, Not Reggie. Place. Not Reggie. Not no, the... Not, not that Reggie. <laughs> yeah. It's Reginald. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Yeah, not that Reginald. Yeah, no, no, no. a different guy. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, he has an eye for the arts. He's got an eye for the arts, but he doesn't Not an eye on my baby in my 24-7 championship. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You're totally still, two you're two still, different Reggies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're not working with the, the first Reggie. You're trying to get your title back. Second. He's got your baby. Exactly. Yes. So that Reggie right there. Gotcha. Both brothers, right. but that <laughs> different mothers. You know right, what I'm no, I totally know what you're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, Reggie shot it, man. Uh, we give him, my uh, manager slash producer, J-Trax, we do what we call a treatment. Come up with these ideas, man, for video. And, oh, we want to do it like this. Let's go back in time. Oh, you wear a cowboy hat? You know, we give it to Reggie. And Reggie does all the calls and find the places and make it all happen for us. Gotcha, gotcha. And he goes, like, I found this spot. You're going to love see it. it. Yes. Yeah, and you do. 
And we do love it, man. Um, end up going there, man. The lady was very, man. She had so much hospitality, man. It was, mm-hmm. it was awesome. Uh, everywhere we went, man, it was just the energy, man. I'm all about energy. Yeah. Energy just You, you kind of know, happen. if you pay attention to it, you kind of know right away whether something's the right fit or the wrong fit. Or, you know. You know. You just got to listen to that, right? You got to go with that gut instinct. Yeah. It's there for a reason. Yeah. A lot of us overlook it, ignore it, don't even pay it, no, never mind, but you got to. Right. Well, yeah, and sometimes, like, you want something to be so, so much that you ignore all the signs that it's not. Like, yes. Hey, but but that it's always going to bite you. You won't accept it. Yeah. Don't want to admit defeat. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's like, don't just throw this one out and find the next one. You'll get there. The next one will be the one it's meant to be. Right, right. Absolutely. Or maybe it'll be two or three times from now. But right. You'll, you'll or get maybe there. three or four times you won't ever find it. Maybe never. D- deal with it. De- <laughs> yeah. Find something else. <laughs> I'm just tired of hearing about it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think my life is like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how did you, uh, one of my favorite things that happened uh, during the pandemic, it popped up on the WWE Network, uh, was the R-Truth Game Show. And I'll tell you what I really loved about the R-Truth Game Show. It was, uh, it was these moments. It was the poke into the camera. <laughs> For some, I popped. Every time you would like make it like you would turn around, there'd be like a little camera next to you. Yes. And you would like look, make a face into the camera. Yes. It's hilarious. That was a guy named, uh, one of the writers named Brian. That was his idea. He's like, I think we should have a camera. You just, you know, we're going to say things and you just give us your natural reaction to it. And like, yeah, I think it'd be funny. Yeah. So it's, it's crazy you called that out because he's the one that added that little. It was funny. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be surprised how much just that much adding of a show, just me turning around, making a face. Makes a show. Yeah, it just adds. A, it's just this layer. It's a detail, right? That right. Doesn't, it doesn't need to be there, but the fact that it adds and the fact that you add that detail it just makes it feel fuller. Um, was that? I mean, how much of that were you making up as you went, and how much of it oh was? Oh my gosh, uh, a lot of that. <laughs> I mean, a good it amount. was half and a half, man. Yeah. Um, they would call me like the day before, mm-hmm. or we, we would go over the show, mm-hmm. and um. It never ended how we say we're going to end it. And, of course, they're laughing on their end. And I'm laughing on my end. And like, oh, we just got to keep that. That that was just great. A lot of stuff was just happening that was supposed to happen, but it was making the moment. It was making the show to where, like, I think maybe, like, after the third or fourth episode, we knew what the show was going to be. Mm-hmm. We knew, oh, this is this is how the show works. That's just how it, it, it it's going to be like this. Yeah. And we was very sure of it. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, and that's kind of what made it. Was there were there any like of the contestants, the superstars that were on that were going like they what were you wanting to be on it? Oh, they wanted to be. Oh on my it. god! Yeah, I would go to work and people were like, "Why are you asking me on your game show? Why? <laughs> oh, I can't be on your game show." They was hearing from other people like, "Oh man, this guy and it's truth. We got to do it." It's, it was funny, man. That's amazing. So funny and cool to have my peers that that's busy with other things in their lives and like, oh, "I want to be on your game show. I want to do. It. Oh, I'll do it for you. Don't even worry about it." Yeah, and it was just a lot of them didn't have a clue what to expect, but they knew it was gonna be something good. Have you ever had a point in your career where like you weren't a popular guy in the locker room or industry, or have you always kind of been that guy? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty B- much B. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what it made me think. I'm like, I mean, it sounds like it's literally been that way since school for you. Yeah, man. I've uh, I've always been blessed. Yeah, to be that guy. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think that, like, people like people that like to have fun. Yes. So if you're there, like, reminding people, like, you know what we do is really fun, right? Right. You know what I mean? You know living can be fun, right? <laughs> you know yeah. separate things can be fun, right? You know, like, have fun, right? Yeah, yeah. So are you going to perform uh, your music live at any point? Oh, man, we're waiting. We're going to start that off first of the year. Yeah. Um, Right now, just a lot of promotion, a lot of building up, mm-hmm. a lot of getting it in people's phones, in their houses, yes. in their heads, to learn it. Playlists. The playlists, man. There's eight songs on there. Um, the intro is what's going to set things off. The intro is pretty much setting up the stage for what legacy is all about. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Journeying into, in, into my life through my eyes, my mind, my heart. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and coming back with legacy that's already out. They're coming back with uh, respect, which mm-hmm. takes you back. Talking about writing stuff way back in the days. A little bit of taking you back to what I used to do. 
Remember when I was hustling? All them dudes come around with it, down with them. You gonna sneak or swim if you don't drown with them? Probably. Come up on a check and now they proud of me. I'm gonna stack money when you steady want it out of me. Big dog. Really been here and started from the bottom. Stuff like that's gonna be don't on Don't take there. away my YouTube ad revenue. <laughs> don't send me any of those music rights. <laughs> Copyrights, because I'm going to say, no, he did that. I didn't ask him to do that. <laughs> yeah, man, but uh, stuff like that. And I got a song there called Dubai, which is like, uh, it ended up being one of my favorite songs on there because of the way it came about. Um, me and Tracks right on feel. And, and the song we write is like, uh, how you feel? Or mm -hmm. What kind of mood you in? And Dubai came about to where he was like, uh, out of all the places you've traveled mm -hmm. in the world, you've been a lot of places, what's your most favorite place? And I'm like, oh, it gotta be Dubai. And he's like, Dubai? He's like, why? He's like, oh, he said, what did you do over there? I said, bro, we ate good. You know what I'm saying? The food is good. For now, he's like, what food? What's the best food? I said, it's kind of weird, but like, the chicken. You know what I'm saying? The chicken was good. I said, they did all kinds of things to it. Like, it was good. So we actually did a song first about, you know what I'm saying? I eat chicken when I'm in Dubai. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, no, oh, no, we, I can't, my brother can't put a song out talking about, <laughs> I like eating chicken when I'm in Dubai, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, world traveler, but we can't, going, yeah, yeah I, get I, I get it, the get hood's it. gonna be hot about this, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and I'm like, dude, does nobody want to hear about Dubai, man? He said, bro, there are people that read about this place, hear about it, that will never, ever get to experience it, but there are fans of yours and they know you've been there. Mm -hmm. so of course they will want to hear what you've done, what you experienced through your eyes and, and through your take on it. So I'm like, all right, cool. So we did it, man. And um, it's like actually one of my favorite songs on there. Really? Yes. Because it comes from such a real place. It comes from a yeah. real place, man. Um, just going through it, man, when you, when you listen to the song. Uh, Umbrella. Umbrella comes about uh, all the accolades I've accomplished. Mm -hmm. um, being the first NWA World Heavyweight Champion is black. Um, starting where I started from by Jack Crockett believing in me and... and Umbrella it is all the drip is just all my accolades that I've, I've accomplished. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And put it on record. Pat myself on the back. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like not? I went through the storm, I came out. You know what I'm saying? Wet, but I'm still coming out. You know what, <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? So um, there's so many songs in there. I'm gonna get right. Uh, talks about just going through life, getting right with yourself mm -hmm. as a person. Once you know yourself, you can deal with any situation, anybody else. You know what I'm saying? So there are so many songs on there that opens a door into my legacy from my perspective of it. If you're a fan, if you're not a fan, you'll respect it, but most most importantly, you're gonna feel it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that I think that's all important, right? Because I think that part of like being really good at being entertaining is that sometimes people forget the real story yes. behind the person because they're just too busy laughing at the joke. Yes. And you they know? can't relate. They don't relate. There's right. no connection there. Right. And it's like, oh yeah, I forgot. Like this is the life that this guy's led and these are the steps that got him to where he's Boom. at, is it difficult to like narrow it down to eight songs? Like, did you have a lot more? Oh no, we got enough for three albums. That's what I figured. Oh, this is just the beginning. Yeah, this is just right here. And, and what I like about it, um, Dominic Ray Mysterio's son. Uh -huh. um, I let a lot of my friends hear my music before it comes out, and uh, Dominic heard "Out the Window," which drops Friday, December third, and he's like, "Truth." Legacy was good, but I like this better than Legacy. This is like my vibe right here. I can, I'm with my girl. This is my vibe. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So it's supposed to get better and better. Yeah. And that's how my music is, man. Like, out of the three albums that I have, I'm coming back with a country song the first of the year. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Yeah, everybody. Man. You know what? They laughed when Lil Nas X did it. He's the biggest star in the world. Blanco Brown. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But nothing's going to be like Barnyard Flexing. Barnyard flexing. You like that, right? I love I'm it. Saying, I said it first right here. I love it. Yes. Barnyard flexing is coming 2022. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that, Everybody going to be flexing in the barnyard, dog. That's what I was just about to say. <laughs> barnyard flexing just feels like... I couldn't think of anything more inclusive. I feel like we can all barnyard flex yes. wherever we're from, yes. whatever our life experiences are, whoever we hang with. Everyone can barnyard flex. Everybody can barnyard flex, dog. It's gonna become like an epidemic. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask you to do it. Is there like a dance thing? Okay. It's gonna be a whole dance thing too. <laughs> We're gonna get the TikTokers involved. Yes, We're gonna yes. be barnyard flexing on TikTok. And you know, I mean you know. Because I've talked to the people, you know they're 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 I believe, I believe there's enough love for our truth. We're gonna see people 
barnyard flexing immediately. Oh my gosh, barnyard flexing is gonna become like a rash. I think so. Everybody's gonna get it. I think. It, I mean, even in WWE, I think you're gonna be going to those non televised shows, the house shows. Just the barnyard flex. I think the audience is gonna be barnyard flexing. <laughs> I know the new day is gonna be barnyard flexing. <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of barnyard. Flexing. Yes. You like that? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I think it's genius. Yes. 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 But before we get to is that's not on the EP though. That's well, not on the EP. That's uh that's, that's a just single how we're gonna start the year. Just, we think Barnyard Flexing can live on its own. I think it can too. And we'll, we'll, just yeah. based on the name and <laughs> <laughs> we'll drop Barnyard Flex and then we'll probably drop the, the next EP. Wow. Or, or come back with a whole album. Like, yeah. like I said, we got like we got enough for three albums. Yeah. So it's just flooding the industry, flooding the market with nothing but Ron Killings, aka R Truth. I love it. I love it. Just content, content, content. Now, is it difficult when you come from a world like uh like WWE, where it's like fly by the seat of your pants, like I just thought of it, we're gonna do it right now, put the camera on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Is it difficult to hold it? You know what I mean? Like with, with your music to be like, you know, Barnyard Flexing is coming, right. for instance. But we're going to hold it. We're going to let it sit. And at the right time, we're going to drop it. Is it difficult to have that discipline when you're used to just making content on the fly and going and going and going? Or do you like the process? Um, A little of both. Yeah. Um, it's, the discipline is good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You have to, discipline, man, Has you have to have that. And I've learned that with WWE. I've learned that. Outside of WWE, mm -hmm. um, and I think it goes hand in hand. I think it depends on the situation, the product, uh, the presentation, all of the above, and timing. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the timing makes sense on the fly. Sometimes it makes sense to like hold and wait. Mm -hmm. So I think timing um, plays a big key in that. Yeah. Are there any moments that you have like now or in the past? With as much as you've done, where you still like this will be the th like this thing happens that makes you look around and go like, oh my god, this is my life. Like this is I can't believe this is happening now. Like, are you still having those moments at all, or is it all just it, it's so much happening all the time that that you don't? Uh, so much is happening all the time. I don't. Yeah, I, I don't get a chance to. It's right. um, I'm just doing it. Right. I'm doing it. I don't get what's time. right in front of me. What's right in front of me. Yeah. Um, only time I get to stop and smell the roses is when I'm being the husband and the father and the son and the brother and the, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's when I get a chance to stop, check it, blah blah snap. But most of the time I'm on the go. I don't get time to like, wow, I was not. I expect that. Mm -hmm. I know what I have to do. I have a job. I have a mission. I have a. I got things I got to accomplish. I have things I have to execute. I have to like. Yes. So that's where I'm at with it. Yes. Well, how long did, is there a for you to wind down and to kind of get out of performance mode, whether it's wrestling or music, and get into like going to sleep. No, I meant <laughs> no. You said wind a, down. No, I know. I say Jay tries to like sleep yeah. with the TV on. I'm like, dude, you, you can, sleep with the TV on. My mind is still going. We gotta cut the TV off. So my mind goes. He said, "What about the light? Does the light bother you? Sometimes if it can be flashing like in the middle, it's like telling me get up." But what you were saying? I was saying, <laughs> although, <laughs> so it's tough for you to go to sleep. Uh, no, I can go to sleep at a drop of a dime. I was about to say, I know that to be a Boom. fact, because huh? I'm not going to say who it was, <clears throat> but I am going to say there might have been an instance in a locker room where I might have been watching, or somebody might have been watching something on a monitor, <laughs> and like I put my foot under the table where there was a tablecloth, and I thought I hit some wires. Wow, you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it wasn't even like... It wasn't a bit. It wasn't like a thing. There was just a giant a man. Body. A body <laughs> napping under the table with the tablecloth draped over it. I think it was in Canada. Nobody would have known. Nobody. Nobody, nobody just, never knew, man. I just man. put my foot. And I didn't yeah. say anything either. I didn't go like, Truth, what are you doing? I was like, man, he needs he his rest. He out. I saw his foot <laughs> I, like, I just like, my foot slid under the thing. I was like, oh, I hope I didn't unplug anything. And I raised the thing, and I just saw your leg, and I was like, uh, <laughs> "All right, let me let me just make sure I don't put my feet under the table anymore." <laughs> so, 
I think you were doing stuff. You couldn't say nothing. <laughs> no. You just slid back. Just... It was very uncomfortable until you, you kind of slid back. <laughs> <Just>, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not ever trying to get in the way of how an artist does their thing. If this uh-huh, is how this artist good. needs. <laughs> oh, that was great, dog. I forgot about that. Yeah, so no, I knew that you could wind down when need be. I knew if, if, if a nap is needed... Yes, I will take a nap and nap. Yeah, no, I knew that. I meant <laughs> I meant to be in performer mode and then to go home with the family and you're not our truth anymore. You're not Ron Killings the musician. You're just the dad or husband or whatever. Switch. It's just a on off switch like that, it's easy? Yes. That's the way to do it. Uh, we have to be like that. Yeah. You as well. You know what I'm saying? Like from handling your business in your castle. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like um we know where the line, where the red line is, and where the green line is, and that switch is just like turn off. You know what I'm saying? Night and day is um. And sometimes I have to be Ron Killings, our truth, and the husband when I'm out with my, in public with my family. Sure. Um, how many times you're out and somebody recognize you? I'm not an a hole. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like I, I do pictures, I do autographs, mm-hmm. I do um. Um, my fans, we we have that communication. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. Sometimes I have to wear all those hats mm-hmm. regardless of where I'm at or yeah. who I'm with. And my family, I got such a loving wife, kids, they they accept it. Yeah. And they're cool with it. So they they allow me to be Ron Killing, be mm-hmm. our truth. Okay, be dad. Like they allow me that. I yeah. think um when we have that special um stability around us that allows us to be that to wear those different capes, mm-hmm. it becomes like a light switch to us. Definitely. Definitely. Uh real quick, I just realized that I mean I I don't remember if I've ever asked you this or not, but our truth as a name. How did you end up with that name? Because obviously, I mean, I know the pattern. Obviously, like you know, Ron the Truth Killings becomes our truth. It makes perfect sense. But the fact that Ron the Truth Killings was not a WWE yeah. entity, like well, I, I always remember when you came back as our truth. I always thought that was interesting. They're kind of weird, right? Because yeah. I would have thought they'd be like, you know, no, K, yes. K Quick is back. We never knew him as anything else. He just disappeared, and now he's back. And ca- but, like, I mean, I also now, I mean, I can't imagine you as anything besides our truth. Our truth. So when that first happened, like, how did you manage to do that? Um, it was me, Vince, and Steph. Uh, they gave me a list of names. Who was trying to come up with the right name, and because um, they weren't going to go back to Steph. Yeah. I mean, Steph was like, I don't think you should go back to K Quick. That's that's the old you. You're you're. She acknowledged, she's like, you're, you're a different person now. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're matured. I didn't been to Italy and work. I didn't been to Mexico. I didn't been everywhere. I, you I, won I, a world done. title? Yes. And, and they saw where I was, a, I was maturing. Mm-hmm. And I remember she gave, we had a list of our names. Vince wanted to go with the R or something. So we had a list of our names, and it was like R, Jack. I remember so many names on there. And Steph said, our truth. And Vince was, I think Vince was, coming out of who was in his office and he was coming out of the office putting on the coat he said our truth I like that what's the R for <laughs> <laughs> and we just laughed and I said do it our truth and that was it perfect yeah so it was perfect. easily done man. do you remember if there were any bad names on that list or do you not even remember after our truth hit it's like after our truth it was the whole just, thing becomes a wash everybody just everything knows. was washed I just remember um, it was a bunch of R's and it was very like um, help us think of something or what? Or, and I'm like, I was kind of like, thought y'all don't really want K Quick? I mean, <laughs> the people kind of remember him a little bit. Yeah, they're like, no, nah, K Quick is oh, you're different now. Nah, we got to come up with something new. So it was just like within the spirit of that moment because I was going to debut that night. So it was like, oh, it was this, that sh- night. It was that quick, yeah. So it was like, hey, Vince, would you come in? Come in, think of the name. We're going to announce you. At, okay, now, like, yeah, spirit of the moment. That's how we work. Yeah. So it's like we coming up with, we, we sitting like, dude, like, okay, name, 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 and. Stephanie's throwing out names and she's writing them down. She's like, you're writing them down. Oh, they throwing names. She's like, R, R Truth? Vince comes out. R Truth. I like that. But what's the R for? <laughs> <laughs> that worked, Bing. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> that was it. We got it. Well, man, Truth, Ron Killings, everybody get on to wherever you get your music Apple Music Spotify all digital platforms everything. you can go get it uh, go stream the video if you haven't seen the video on YouTube my Ron Killings TV channel uh, social media Ron Killings 1 uh, TikTok Ron Killings 1 Legacy the EP Legacy the single Out the Window the single from December 3rd through December the 10th 
it's gonna be legacy time. Is there any way to get like CDs or anything like that, or straight to streaming? We actually finna throw some CDs and some um, 45s in there too, some albums too in there. Could be, I mean, it is the holidays. It's coming back too. It's the holidays. Hey, and I'm all about the spirit of giving, dog. This you know is what gonna, saying? you know, this is gonna, you know, what's coming back? What? Cassette tapes and VHS. Are you serious? I swear. VHS, v- dude. Impact just put out a pay per view on VHS, and I looked at it and I said, I didn't even watch that pay per view, and I want the VHS. Like, just I'm to t- have it or what? I, yeah, just. To, I mean, I do have a VCR over there. I'm, I'm still. But, uh, yeah, but okay, but you got blow it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> fix the tracking. You remember the tracking? <laughs> but I mean, look, you know, putting out legacy on a cassette tape. Telling you, that man, would be legendary, right? It'd be legendary. Cassette tape, cassette tape, vinyl. Yep, Vi- you got to do the vinyl. Are we gonna go back to eight tracks or no? I don't know if you need to go that far back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but throw a cassette tape within in a stocking. Reason. Within yeah. reason. Yeah. Within reason. I like that though. We honestly, dog. Plus, we, then people meet you and they can get the tape, the cassette they get tape signed. Physical. A guy and I in, in RKE threw it out there and made tracks kind of. <laughs> no. Don't laugh at him. Don't laugh at him. That's right. <laughs> you gotta get that cassette tape out. Get that cassette tape, or at least, at least get the get the. What was it? Barnyard flexing. Barnyard flexing. Cause remember, cassette singles, cassette tape singles. Oh. Put it out on a cassette single. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> Whoever. <laughs> they tried to write it down, though. So he got it. True. Thank you so much, oh, man. You're the man. Thank you, Sam, man. Thank you, man. Always supportive, man. Appreciate you.